Now is the part of our show where we look back in remembrance at all of the lens mounts that were taken from us too early that have brought so many photographers joy and happiness over so many years. So I guess I shouldn't have made that memoriam statement plural. It looks it was, like only one lens It mount. was an easy edit. <laughs> well, welcome back to Beer TV viewers. Chris Nichols here, and of course I'm joined by... Jordan Drake. The illustrious. And uh, yeah, okay, so first off, Sony A mount, there's no official announcement from Sony. No manufacturer says, we're done with a no. mount. They just look at their watch and tap their foot and they're wait like, for it to get you, awkward and yeah. be like, have you left <laughs> Have you yet? got the point? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Deep Review had a big article about it. They did, and Sony's discontinued a few bodies, so it seems like the right time for us to look back at the a mount yeah <laughs> i'm young like super young and i just kind of knew the a mount after sony had already acquired minolta oh yeah so i'm counting on you old timer take me back tell me about the before time yeah i did get to be at the camera store during a very exciting time seeing that transition to film to digital but i think we got to go back a bit further i mean They've always been an innovative company. They actually quite quite a popular following in Canada. 1985, they made the first autofocusing, like integrated lens mount system of cameras ever. I mean, that really changed the world. And I, I wasn't in the camera store in 1985, right? I was six years old. I was playing with GoBots. But come to 2002, I was at the camera store. I was like 21, 22, I think. I was selling Minolta Maxim cameras and the Dynax 7, the Dynax 9. I mean, these are really interesting SLRs, but even at that time, you could not help but feel like Minolta was kind of on the way out and things were kind of changing. I didn't work with you at the camera store yet. I was working at another camera store, uh, Blacks Photography, and now defunct. Yes, now defunct, yeah. Yeah, camera outlet. And, you know, we didn't even stock Minolta. It was kind of an mm. obscure brand at that point. You know, we had the 5D and the 7D. And I think the thing is, Minolta at the time, it was kind of like Pentax. It was only loyal Minolta people buying the stuff. Right. Uh, they were very technologically advanced and honestly, sometimes way too customizable cameras like you really had to be quite techy to really get into them and use them to their fullest but such crazy technology i mean they were putting motors inside their lenses that was a big deal at the time ssm motors in right. their lenses and anti-shake in the 7d i mean in the body in yeah. the body ibis for all lenses it's like, kind of funny because i it makes perfect sense that sony bought them because yeah. sony is very much like a we have the best technology you know our, our technology technology and that seems to be minolta's thing too is like we have the most gizmos and gadgets in our cameras. honestly at the time like i don't know maybe i'm biased against konica minolta because i I worked in a photo lab using a Konica Minolta Mini Lab and it was just the worst possible garbage. And like where we took the fixer to reclaim it was like this wooden shed and people just like used it as a toilet after using the train. Like I'm this getting off topic. nothing to do with the lens. I'm getting off topic, but you know, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, I think when Sony decided to buy Minolta, everybody was like, wow, that makes a lot of sense because there's a lot of innovation there, but the brand name isn't really inspiring that much business anymore. So Sony's first A-mount camera was the A100, which I really distinctly remember because I had just bought a Canon uh, Rebel XT, an eight megapixel camera. And then all of a sudden, Sony brings out the A100 with 10 megapixels, unheard of resolution, <laughs> but it also had shake reduction in it. So it was like, oh, did I make a mistake? So uh, I actually went to another camera store who will not be named. <laughs> Uh, picked up the camera, I thought it felt extremely cheap, and I remember distinctly the shutter sounded like bouncing a ping pong ball off of a table when you pushed I, the shutter They on. were ugly cameras, they really were. I didn't like them at all. And the guy behind the counter, I'm like, did I make a mistake? Like, is this the, the future? And they were like, look, dude, Sony is never gonna be a brand that real photographers are gonna take seriously, and, uh, he was wrong. <laughs> so, I mean, a mount is really about the lens. Are there any lenses that you really remember in the A mount? It's funny, Sony lenses, not really, because they no. never they never sold very well, and they weren't anything to write home about. No. You know, Sony was coming out with new cameras like the 300 series and 500 series. They weren't selling very well. The only people that were really buying them were already uh, ex-Minolta users, right. right? And they already had glass. They had great glass that they loved, the, the beer can, the 70 yeah. to 210 F4. Yeah. It, was, it was actually beautiful bouquet on that. I really liked the 85 millimeter 1.4. That was a hot autofocusing lens from Minolta as well. Yeah, the big thing for me, it wasn't the Sony glass after after they acquired Minolta. It was now that Sony had that mount, we'd start seeing some Zeiss lenses produced in the A mount. So, yeah. you know, I really like their 1635 2.8 and their 
135, 18 for the longest time until Sigma and now Sony and E-mount had some. Like that lens had a very unique look that was completely its yeah. own. But you know what Sony was doing that was really good at the time, although it was a slow start for them, they had great technology. They were starting to make cameras a little bit more sophisticated. And then they really started pushing things like SLT. I mean, semi-translucent mirrors, it's nothing new. I mean, Canon and Nikon have been doing that for a while. And uh, for those that might not know, I mean, semi-translucent mirrors is where the mirror doesn't actually flap up and down. Light just goes right through to the sensor behind it. And it really means you can speed up the shooting speed. And you know, Jordan, we had cameras like the Sony Alpha 55. I mean, that really kind of brought very fast frame per second burst rates to a more affordable crowd. And when the cameras like the a77 and a99 started coming out that's where i really started paying attention those cameras i personally thought were pretty sexy looking you might disagree yes <laughs> but they were fast they were capable they had really nice viewfinders and uh, that's where i started really start feeling like oh yeah this might take off and, and really that's when actually a lot of consumers started to buy into sony even if they weren't existing minolta users so you have to remember while well, sony's got all this slt technology that they're pushing at the same time mirrorless is really coming into the fray. Sony's oh, got yeah. their own E-mount cameras and, and they show a ton of potential, but you gotta remember the early autofocus on some of those mirrorless bodies like the NEX3, NEX5, it was rough. So oh, yeah. A-mount still had a real advantage if you wanted to have some of those EVF technologies, but good autofocus. Oh, sure. I mean, we were some of the first to, to really recognize, oh yeah, mirrorless is here to stay. It's gonna be great. But I remember so many SLR photographers being like, mirrorless is a toy, it's gonna die. Every time you say that in the digital industry, that means it's gonna be wildly successful. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we could already see the decline was there, but kudos to Sony for actually supporting their users in A-mount for so long. I yeah. mean, you know, even some new adapters just came. The LAEA5 has the focus motor built into it. So hopefully that's gonna make it compatible with a whole lot of lenses, you know, in the mm -hmm. future. It still seems like it really only functions best on very high-end bodies. Hopefully Sony keeps including support for that in all their new bodies going forward, yeah. or even add some more support through firmware or something. But yeah, it is nice that you have that bridge. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I think the big takeaway for me is that Sony just took Minolta's excellent technology. They ran with it. it there were some teething issues. It took a while to win people over, but now, of course, Sony's become a very big presence. And, and the guy kind of, in that camera store was wrong. Yeah, he was wrong. And they're they're technical innovators. They've they've yeah. run with that, and it's done very well for them. But you know, yeah, this is one lens mount that we're pretty sure is on its way out. It kind of makes you think, then, Jordan, like. Are the other manufacturers being next? Is Nikon going to start dropping their mount? Is Canon going to start? start Pentag? I don't know. If anyone drops a lens mount, we think it's uh, on its deathbed. We will produce some more of these Requiem for a Mount videos. Well, on that pessimistic downer note, uh, let us know if you guys enjoyed this concept and want us to do more videos speculating about the industry and about changes or maybe even looking back at the past and what we enjoyed. But thanks for joining us, guys. Please subscribe. Let us know what you think in the comments below. We'll see you guys very soon.